Welcome to Mental Game Mastery, where we dive into the world of sports psychology and peak performance, designed for you to level up your athletic career. Hi there, athletes. I'm your host, Coach P, bringing you mental performance insights from being in the trenches of athletic coaching. And as a mental performance coach, I get the privilege to work with all athletes across all sports. And in this episode, we are diving into a strategy for peak performance that I've taken from the corporate world that also applies to the sports world. I teach about radical candor. It's a management philosophy developed by author Kim Scott. It's about finding the sweet spot between caring personally and challenging directly. After listening to a Gary Vee podcast, he mentioned the word kind along with this radical candor. I think this is a great addition to this approach. If we add kind, caring, and a direct challenge in conversation, it can revolutionize how we interact in our lives, making our feedback more effective and our relationships more authentic. So as I mentioned radical candor, I want you to think in terms of kind candor. Because in the workplace, in locker rooms, relationships often take a backseat to tasks and deadlines. Radical candor suggests that building genuine relationships is key. It's about connecting on a human level, which in turn makes challenging conversations more productive, which leads into one of the core challenges of radical candor, the difficulty of delivering this direct feedback. It's a common dilemma among teams, especially player to player. How do we tell a teammate something they may not want to hear? The reluctance often stems from a fear of conflict or damaging the relationship. We've all been there, haven't we? But radical candor, kind radical candor, argues that avoiding these tough conversations can be more harmful in the long run. In my experience, the discomfort of challenging directly is a temporary hurdle. The real challenge is overcoming our own fears and our own biases. We worry about being perceived as harsh or unkind. But remember, the essence of kind, radical candor is caring personally. I think we can call it tough love, but it's not about being brutal. It's about being honest and respectful. So Kim Scott, the author of Radical Candor, puts it this way. Challenging people is often the best way to show them that you care when you're the boss. And as it applies to sports, this doesn't just apply to coaches. It's a principle that can transform teammate interactions. So how do we do this? Well, we need to set the stage. Let your teammate or whomever you're wanting to talk to know that you're coming from a place of caring. Use phrases like, I want to see you succeed. And that's why I think it's important to talk about this. A common misconception is that it's about being blunt. But that's not quite right. It's about being kind and clear, not harsh. It's about offering feedback and guidance that can help the other player grow. And let me share an example from my own personal life. This was me receiving the feedback. It was during a time where I was fighting through feeling under the weather and still showing up to work to coach. The team had just broke it out, and I made a snide remark about how it didn't sound too enthusiastic. And my head coach asked me into his office to discuss how negative the comment came across. I didn't offer any excuses. I listened to what he had to say, and I said, thank you. Because immediately I had awareness, and I made the change to my attitude when interacting with people in the team facilities. So how about you? Can you think of a time when you held back from giving feedback? What held you back? Or can you think about a time when you didn't receive feedback? What held the person back? How might the situation have improved if you had embraced the principles of kind, radical candor? Overcoming the challenges of having this type of conversation isn't about changing who you are. It's about evolving how you communicate. It's a journey, not just a destination. You see, at the heart of these conversations lies the concept of trust. It's the fabric of any effective team. Without trust, the very idea of having a challenging conversation with a teammate can seem daunting or even confrontational. But when trust is present, feedback, even when critical, is received as a gesture of care and commitment to mutual growth. So how do we build this trust? It starts with openness and honesty in our interactions. 
It's about being transparent about your intentions and consistently showing that you have your teammates' best interests at heart. This means admitting mistakes, sharing credit, and being open about your own challenges. It's about being a human because we are all just trying to figure it out. But alongside trust, effective communication is key. It's not just about what you say, but how you say it. It's about being clear, concise, and empathetic. When giving feedback, it's crucial to be specific and focus on behaviors rather than personal traits. For instance, instead of saying someone is being lazy, point out the specific behavior like, hey, today in practice, during when name whatever specific drill, it didn't seem like you were giving great effort. It comes across as if you don't care about the team and how we will perform in games. Because as coach always says, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. And if you're the one receiving this type of feedback, it's just as important to listen as it is to speak. This means giving your full attention, not face down in your cell phone. Ask clarifying questions and reflecting back what you think you've heard to ensure understanding. If your coach hasn't done it, then this means in your locker room, the players make it clear that all perspectives are valued and that feedback is a tool for development, not punishment. And if you notice, celebrate moments when your teammates are engaging in real conversations. Finally, encourage a championship culture that allows for feedback that doesn't always come from the coaches, but is welcome from all directions. When players and members of the organization feel empowered to give feedback, it reinforces trust and shows that having kind, candid conversations is a shared practice. Now let's dive into the practicalities of implementing this within the culture of the team. This isn't just about knowing the theory. It's about putting it into action in a way that transforms your interactions with everybody involved in the organization. First and foremost, Start with yourself. Start in your own home. Lead by example. Make it a habit to ask for feedback from your own personal corner team and your teammates. It's not just about asking, do you have any feedback for me? But about being specific. Ask questions like, what's one thing I could do better? Or how did you feel about my role in the game last night? This shows that you're open to growth and sets the stage for a culture of open communication. Gauging the feedback is an art. It's about understanding how different people react to feedback. Some may appreciate directness, while others might need a more empathetic approach. Pay attention to body language and verbal cues. If someone seems defensive or upset, it's important to address their feelings. Say something like, I can see this is hard for you to hear. How can we work through this together? It's about balancing honesty with empathy. When it's time to give challenging feedback, be clear and be precise. Avoid generalizations. Instead of saying you're not doing well, specify the issue. I noticed that the last two practices you had significant mistakes, which has impacted the team's performance. Always focus on the issue, not the person. And you being a master of the mental game by working with a mental performance coach can point them in the right direction for how to help with this performance problem. This helps in keeping the conversation productive and focused on improvement. And finally, follow up. Feedback isn't a one and done deal. It's a continuous cycle. Check in with your teammates after giving them feedback. Ask them how they're doing and if they need any further support. This shows you care not just about the work, but about their growth and well-being. Implementing a culture of having kind, radical, Candid conversations isn't easy, but it is incredibly rewarding. It leads to better relationships, improved team performance, and a more open, trusting team culture. Now, how does this relate to athletes and coach interaction? Well, here are some questions to ponder. How would you, as an athlete, prefer to receive constructive feedback from your coach? What makes you feel respected and valued when receiving this feedback? And number two, as an athlete, recall a time when you received some hard feedback. How did it affect your performance and your personal growth? Did it feel like it came from a place of genuine care? I'd love to hear your thoughts and your experiences. Reach out to me on my social channels and or email with your stories and or questions. And to wrap up, remember that having kind, radical candor 
is about caring personally and challenging directly. It's a tool for building stronger teams, stronger relationships, and achieving better results through honest and compassionate communication. Now, if you found this insightful and helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. Share this video with other athletes, with your coaches, and definitely subscribe for more insights on mental performance. Be sure to share your own strategies for your mental game and your kind, radical conversations in the comments. And until next time, stay composed, have those conversations, look to perform at your best when it matters most, and remember, the time is now.